your social media profile becomes an asset that you always have. It's like an email list. It's an asset that you will always have. It's a group of people that you can reach at any point, at any time, whenever you choose. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. Welcome to Marketing Interruption, a daily podcast powered by Blue Tusker that interrupts your day with marketing news, tips and strategies from an entrepreneur who lives and breathes marketing. Now, let the interruption begin with your host, Andrew Ma. Hello and welcome to episode number 30 of Marketing Interruption, the big 3-0. Today we are recapping what we did for the week. So on Monday, I touched on PageSpeed optimization, all the stuff that my developer sent me that told me that this is what he does for PageSpeed optimization. That is something that I highly suggest you look into. What I would do, if I were you, when this podcast is over, go to Google Analytics, go look at your page speed, and go see what you can do to get it lower. I don't care what it's at. I don't care if it's already really low. Get it lower. Throw it into GT Metrics, get a rating on it, and see what it is that's dragging you down and have someone help you fix it. Even if you have a developer on hand or you need to get someone through Upwork or something like that, just have someone reduce that page speed as low as you can get it. It's going to help your SEO. I guarantee that. Uh, I talked about how I get my wife and my colleagues and friends and family to help me test websites. So obviously something I would suggest you guys do. You can also, which I kind of meant, forgot to mention this, is that I typically like to stand kind of over their shoulders and take note of what it is they're doing. But you can also just take the website, tell someone to download, like I use Loom, so tell them to download Loom and say, hey, here's this website, do me a favor, don't look at the website at all, download Loom, start Loom, then open the website and do this stuff for me. Most of your, you don't, that way you don't have to be over their shoulder. You can send it to anyone and they'll be like, if you do this for me, I'll send you 10 bucks or something like that. Then mow me five bucks. So that's another way to do it. I uh, talked about that email mistake I made on Wednesday um, where basically made a really bad, several really bad typos and sent out an email that actually ended up helping helping us. If I could go back, I probably would still make those typos just because I know how well it worked out. However, I never did it again. I didn't, I always made sure, like I started sending that newsletter to other people before it went out. I started double checking it. I started taking all the, at that time I didn't have Grammarly. So I would just take the, all the copy and throw it into word and make sure that like nothing was broken and spelled wrong. Um, but if you can personalize, not personalize, if you can, yes, personalize, but humanize the mistakes that you sometimes make, you can really bounce back from a marketing issue you may have had. Sometimes these things happen. We're marketers, we're human. Sometimes people think like, oh, every newsletter should be polished perfect. Every ad should be completely done like with no issue. It's a big issue with um, TV ads now. People will put out an ad that they love and they thought they did a great job. And then everyone's like, no, there's something wrong with it where I hate it. And then it looks like so-and-so's doing it. It's like, Everyone's complaining about it. So you got to humanize it and be like, look, here's why we did it. Here's what we were thinking. Maybe we were wrong. But if you can personalize it and humanize exactly what it is that you messed up on, it can really help your brand. Then the free newsletters I went through yesterday. Morning Brew, Marketing Brew, which is like a side off of Morning Brew. There's others too, by the way. There's Retail Brew, which for e-commerce sellers is very interesting. Um, I don't read that one every morning because it tends to cater more towards like Target and Walmart and like in-store stuff, which I'm more e-commerce, but it's still a very good one. Um, anyway, then they also had the Skim, the Click, Daily Carnage. I think that was it. And I also asked everyone to tell me if there's other ones because I love, I love these. It's what I do in my free times. I just read these daily things. Um... And then, so the question I had uh, this week was someone emailed us, Sarah, I think it was Sarah, emailed asking about, she's starting an e-commerce business, has a great product, but doesn't know how to start building the audience when you're like starting from scratch. So this one is difficult because it's going to be dependent on where you're at, typically financially. So if you need sales and you need sales right now, 
because you're bleeding or something, I would probably do paid advertising. I would definitely go just straight into Google, start plowing out your products, start gathering data, and just start sending people to your website. Um, if you have some time and you can invest in the future, I would start doing content. I would focus on creating blog posts, start building that organic traffic, focus on social media, spend some of your time there. You're gonna spend a lot of, t growing a brand new social platform with, so going from an account with zero and growing it is a nightmare, but it's, you're building an asset. Your, your, social media plat your social media profile becomes an asset that you always have. It's like an email list. It's an asset that you will always have. It's a group of people that you can reach at any point, at any time, whenever you choose. Obviously that a privilege can get abused, but that's the point. So building that audience is something where you'll actually be able to leverage them in the future. You might be nicer to find like a nice happy medium if you can advertise a little bit, but grow that audience simultaneously, that would be the best bet. But you're gonna have to go all in on something to let it start to, to unravel. In the beginning, the biggest issue with newer e-commerce sellers, now I know that, I know Sarah, she is not new, but I know one of the bigger issues of e-commerce sellers right in the beginning, if they've never done this before, is they think that I'm going to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a really nice Shopify site. I'm going to take this awesome product that I created and I put it on this site, and then I'm going to make so much money. And it just doesn't work like that. You have to spend an arm and a leg just to get enough data out of your paid advertising so that you can start to optimize it. You have to create a ton of content. It can take six months to a year for certain blog posts to start to rank at a tolerable level where you're actually getting some organic traffic. So even if you start now, you need blog posts like two or three times a day or two or three times a week at minimum, it's still gonna take six, seven months for that to start to show um, on average, not always. But Starting in the beginning, that would be my suggestion, all right? Uh, that was all I had for today, and that was all I had for this week, so obviously appreciate it. Please rate, review, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please shoot me an email at marketinginterruption at bluetusker.com, and I'd be happy to ask answer any of your questions here on the show. Uh, but that's it, and I will talk to you all next week. See ya. Thank you for joining us for today's marketing interruption. Make sure to rate, review and subscribe to the show. And don't forget to email marketinginterruption at bluetusker.com with any marketing questions you'd like to have answered on the show. And head over to marketinginterruption.bluetusker.com to catch up on past episodes. Until next time. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.